The Bet by Kimberly Joy Villanueva. In love, you play with all of your heart or nothing at all. Chapter 9, Sophia's POV Good morning! Bright and shine! I groan out loud and turn the alarm off. Isn't Monday already? I want to sleep in, but I'll be late if I don't get up now. I open my eyes and I look at the swirly patterns and bursts of vibrant colors that now adorn my formerly stark white walls. I still can't get over it. It's exactly what I need. And more unbelievably, Drake did it for me. He helped me drag all the furniture out and line the whole room with newspaper to make sure that the paint wouldn't drip on the floor. He even painted different kinds of flowers and butterflies to add to mine. Now the walls look like something from an art museum. I love it. I walk to the dining room and see Andre having breakfast. Come and join us, Aunt V says, pausing from reading the newspaper. Where's Drake? Andre will give you a ride to school, Aunt V says. No, it's okay, Aunt V, I decline. I'll take the bus. We're going to the same place anyway, he states. We're already leaving the same house. Okay, I murmur, defeated. Where's Drake? I ask, curiously, almost done with my meal. Andre answers, he already left an hour ago. He wanted to say goodbye to you, but he didn't. He don't want to wake you up. He said to tell you, be in literature class. Andre says, mimicking Drake's voice. We both end up laughing because he sounds so funny. Are you ready to go now? Andre says, finally. I nod. Andre is a better driver than Drake. His eyes are actually on the road. I just have to tell him to use his seatbelt. The drive to school is longer than what I'm used to, since Andre's house is farther from school than ours. Since we have time, I ask him a question. What if people ask me why I'm here with you? Andre looks at me and says, Tell them to leave you alone, that you're living with me and my mom. It's not a big deal. Really? I ask. Of course. There's nothing wrong with the truth. Should you be ashamed that you're living with us now? No. You're blushing, he observes. I am not, I say furiously. I keep my mouth shut for the rest of the ride, contemplating whether I go with him to school again tomorrow. Drake's POV Are you insane? Andre asks furiously. Why don't you just ask her? I have, but she just refuses to tell me. We are at the lockers getting our stuff a few minutes before class. Why don't you ask Driana then? As if she'll tell me, I scoff. I'll ask her, he offers. You? Stand at his brushiness. Why would you be any different? She's not going to tell you, I declare, shaking my head. Sophia has probably already told her not to divulge any information. You know how girls are. Right, she mutters, agreeing in defeat. So this is the plan. I need you to help me get her records from the student file. I continue. Like I said, are you crazy? No one gets to see a student's permanent record, not even your own, Andre protests. Which is where you'll come in handy. You stand guard. Let me know if there's someone coming. We'll go during lunch. No one ever eats inside a principal's office. I say calmly. Drake. You have a dead wish, he counters. Andre, it's either this or I don't get the details at all. 
I say, my mind made up. Okay, fine. Let's do this, he relents. I know where Andre's hesitation is coming from. If we get caught, there's no telling what will happen. We could be expelled. It's very simple, I tell him. We use a signal, a whistle, clap, or any noise when you see someone coming. Hey, no fair. I want to go in too, he objects. No, you give me the signal. That way, if the worst happens, only one of us will get caught. No sense in letting them catch the both of us. He groans, but still says in a clearly defeated voice. Okay. We walk towards the principal's office, both of us preoccupied with our own thoughts. Here we are, Andre says excitedly. We stop in front of the principal's office, and fortunately, there's no one in sight. I twist the doorknob. Nothing. I try again. No go. It's locked, I say, stating the obvious. Andre looks smug. For a moment, I think he is glad that we don't have to do this. Then he gets something from his pocket. He dangles a key in front of me. My eyes widen. Where did you get that? Let's just say a friend of mine did me a little favor, he says. What if your friend tells on us? She won't, he says positively. He slides the key and twists the doorknob. The door opens quietly and he says, Ready? It's now or never. Are you guys curious for the next chapter? If yes, tune in every Friday at 9 in the evening. Thank you for listening.